This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to this online version for First Lutheran Church and Preschool. My name is Pastor Andy Jones. I'm so glad that you all could join us this morning for worship. A few announcements before we begin. Today we are starting our outdoor worship services. Obviously you are joining us digitally today, but if you would like to join us in subsequent weeks, we will be doing that outside. So please follow the guidelines that are noted in the first notes, but you are more than welcome to continue to join us in this online way as we'll keep doing this for, for the next several weeks. The only other announcement that I have to make today is not by me. It's a video about our vacation Bible school that's coming up from Miss Shannon Carr. Hey, it's Miss Shannon from First Lutheran Church and Preschool. We want to invite you this year to Vacation Bible School 2020, which is Rocky Railway. So just like we're going to learn about trains and how they have engines with, with lots of power, Jesus' power is stronger than those. We're going to learn that Jesus' power helps us do hard things gives us hope, helps us be bold and brave, helps us live forever, it lets us live forever, and helps us be good friends. So my friends, I can't wait to see you on YouTube July 13th through the 17th for this year's VBS. See you soon. We're looking forward to this new VBS format and we hope you can join us. Our service begins today with the confession and absolution. Hopefully you will find the bulletin and can follow along with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Is this your confession? Yes. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die and rise for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the first hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to
reminder to check out our children's chat videos on our YouTube page. And now we turn to the readings, which today are read by Lynette Campbell. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, starting at verse 7. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. Say, say all my close friends watching for me my fall, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, <clears throat> for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. The epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart of the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms, because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Gospel reading for today is from Matthew chapter 10. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes." A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master the house of Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light and what you hear whispered, 
proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Are, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. We sing the next hymn, the next three stanzas of Just As I Am Without One Plea. Just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight rich is healing of the mind. Yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am. Thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, Thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord, Savior, and gift giver, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this sermon is the epistle reading from Romans 6, especially these words in verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. One of my favorite stories of all time, whether it's, it's the book or the miniseries or the movie, is Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. And in this story... There is a gentleman named Mr. Bennett. And Mr. Bennett is not a terribly wealthy man. He's doing okay for himself. But he has five daughters. And even though he's not terribly wealthy, his youngest daughter, Lydia, falls prey to a fortune hunter, to a man who is only seeking to marry her so that he can have her wealth. And she doesn't have that much wealth, so this doesn't make a lot of sense. So Mr. Wickham, charming as he is, is sort of despicable and runs away with Lydia and refuses to marry her or even come out of hiding until he is paid a large amount of money. An amount of money that Mr. Bennett does not have, does not even have access to. His family is going to be suffering from ridicule and shame and scandal if something doesn't happen, if some miracle doesn't happen, and then one does. Somehow, someone pays off Mr. Wickham. Someone pays what he wants. And Mr. Bennett and his family receive this gift from someone who they don't even know. They don't have any way of paying back this gift. It's just given to them. And they bask in its joy. They're happy that this has happened. It's a wonderful thing that has happened to them. It is a pure gift. And yet, when Mr. Bennett learns who it was who gave him the gift, the somewhat standoffish but kind-hearted Mr. Darcy, 
Mr. Bennett's first reaction is this. He says, I must pay him back. Even though Mr. Bennett cannot pay him back, he has no way to pay him back, that is his first reaction. That he somehow must reciprocate for this gift that he has received. That he is somehow now indebted to Mr. Darcy for this amazing gift that he has received. And I feel like in our world today, we feel this way about gifts. I mean, most of us love receiving gifts. I know that I do. There's nothing better than a Christmas morning opening up a bunch of presents or getting something in the mail for your birthday or an anniversary. It's a delightful thing to open up gifts, to open up these presents, to feel the joy and anticipation of that moment. And yet if we're honest with ourselves, gifts are never truly gifts in our culture. There's always this expectation and etiquette of reciprocity that comes with a gift. I mean, think about it. When you make a new friend and they give you a gift for your birthday, don't you sort of feel obligated to get them a gift for their birthday? Or vice versa. When you give a gift to a new friend, don't you sort of expect that you'll receive one in return? This is how we think about gifts, which really is unfortunate because it's not the intention of true gifts. True, free gifts cannot be repaid. They simply cannot be repaid, much like Mr. Bennett's gift that he received from Mr. Darcy. It cannot be repaid. That is the only way that a gift can truly be a gift. Somehow we have turned gifts into more wages, something that we have earned, something that we can pay back, which really doesn't make any sense. I mean, a wage is something that you earn, something that you deserve. When you go to work, you get paid a certain amount of money for certain work that you do. That's a wage, and that's all good and fine. We earn wages, but you cannot earn your way into a gift. You cannot pay back a gift. It just doesn't work. If you're trying to do that, it ceases to be a gift. And when I think of gifts, like true, real gifts, aside from Pride and Prejudice, I also think of Joseph and his brothers and the stories that come up in, at, toward the end of the book of Genesis. Joseph was kind of annoying to his brothers, and they didn't like him at all. They were so annoyed and angry with him and his behavior toward them that they committed acts of violence against him. They threw him in a pit, they sold him into slavery, they pretended that he had been killed by a wild animal, and they forgot about him. Joseph was brought down to Egypt and put into slavery, and he rose to prominence. Everything he did went well, and then he was imprisoned, and everything sort of fell apart, but then he rose back into prominence for being able to interpret the king of Egypt's dreams. And he rose so high in power that he became second in command to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And when Joseph got out of prison, the reason he got out is because he interpreted a dream of the king of Egypt's that had to do with a coming famine. So Egypt was able to store up all of this food while all of the rest of the regions and nations of the world didn't have any food when the famine hit. They had nothing stored up. So they all kept coming to Egypt to get food. And Joseph's brothers, Joseph's family, were among those who needed food. They were suffering a famine as well up in Israel. So they go down south to Egypt to get food. And there Joseph's brothers meet Joseph, but they don't recognize him. But Joseph recognizes them. And there's this sort of odd exchange where they pay for some food and Joseph gives them their money back and Joseph wants them to bring down his, his full brother Benjamin. And it's a bit odd. But eventually what happens is Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. And it's at that point that they realize more than ever what they've done. They feel the guilt of what they have done to their brother and they fear for their lives because they know that their actions have 
earned them nothing but punishment, imprisonment, and death. They have treated their brothers so terribly, and now he has the power to imprison them, to execute them if he wants to. They are at his mercy. The wages, the, the wages of what they have done, what they have earned, what they deserve, is not good. And yet Joseph gives them a gift, a gift that they could never repay. Joseph forgives them. Joseph reconciles with them. And then Joseph gives them a new life. Joseph brings down his entire family, all of his brothers and their wives and their children and his father. He brings them all down to Egypt out of the famine in Israel and gives them land, gives them a new life that is full of abundance and beauty and food. And they have nothing to worry about for the rest of their days. Joseph gives them this wonderful gift. And there is nothing that they can do to repay him. Much like our epistle reading from Romans 6 says, the wages of sin is death. And that was the wage that Joseph's brothers had earned with their sin. And yet, as the epistle continues, it says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Joseph's brothers are given this new life. And we experience the same sort of thing in Jesus, only in a much fuller, much more complete way. Because like Joseph's brothers, we have sinned. We have done terrible things. And what we have earned, the wages that we have earned from our sinning, is not good. It's earned us death. The wages of sin is death. And there's nothing that we can do to get out of that. We need a free gift. And we receive that free gift in Jesus. Jesus gives us what Joseph's brothers received. He gives us forgiveness. He gives us reconciliation with our God. And he gives us a new life. He makes us new creations. And he even gives us life eternal. Life into eternity. That is what Jesus gives us when he dies on the cross and rises from the grave. It's this exchange of gifts that really is so unbalanced, it doesn't even make sense. It's like if you showed up to a a white elephant gift exchange for Christmas, and what you brought in this white elephant gift exchange was nothing but your sin and the punishment you deserve for your sin. That's what you bring to this exchange, and you give it to Jesus. And Jesus takes that. He takes your sin upon his shoulders, and he dies on the cross, and your sins are forgiven. Jesus takes the punishment you deserve, he takes the death you deserve, and he dies for you. He dies for me. And in exchange, what you walk away with in this gift exchange is Jesus' own righteousness, Jesus' own perfection, Jesus' own holiness. And the result and the fruit of all of that righteousness and holiness is eternal life. That is the gift exchange between us and Jesus. How in the world are we supposed to repay Jesus for what we have received? Like Mr. Bennett, we might feel that instinct. We might feel like we have to pay Jesus back somehow. But we can't. We simply cannot do it. There's no way that we could ever do anything to pay back Jesus for the forgiveness and the new life that he has given us. It's not possible. All that we can do is receive the gift. That's all that we can do. And that's all that Jesus wants from us, is to receive this gift with gladness. Let's receive this gift of grace that Jesus has given us like a kid on Christmas morning. Let's just be filled with so much joy and anticipation that we can't help but smile at the glorious gifts that Jesus has given us. All Jesus wants is for us to open the gifts that he gives us day after day 
with a smile on our face and joy in our hearts. And he wants to watch us open these gifts and delight in seeing us open them. And he does and he will. For our eternal life is not an eternal life separated from God, but it is an eternal life with our God and Father and with Jesus Christ. And day after day, we will open up the gifts of paradise with smiles on our face, with joy in our hearts. And Jesus will simply be there with us, smiling upon us as we bask in the glory of the gifts that he has given us. And it will just be gift upon gift, joy upon joy, grace upon grace, forever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of our Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. One thing to point out, normally at this time I tell you about our online prayer, prayer option that you can do where you can fill out prayer requests. This is at flcconquer.org slash prayers. And I do appreciate you sending in those requests. Please keep doing that. But obviously I can't be in two places at once. So we are pre-recording this particular service. So if I don't have your prayer request, if you submitted it on Sunday morning, uh, I'll get to it next week and I'll be sure to mention it. But if I don't have it this week, that is why. But a reminder also that you can continue to do online giving. That is at flcconquer.org slash giving. Our service continues as we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now turn to the prayers for the day. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick and injured and recovering. Especially today, we pray for Alexa, Ellen, Erna, Harry, Ingrid, Sherry, Elizabeth, Nancy, Haley, and all those that we name now silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you give true freedom, freedom from sin, freedom from death, and freedom from Satan. As our country celebrated Juneteenth this past week, we pray that your freedom in Christ would be announced to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for First Lutheran Preschool, that you would keep all of our children, families, and teachers safe and healthy in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord placed on his people for generations. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. promised good to me, his word my hope secures, he will my shield and portion be, as long as life endures. Through and snares I have already come His grace has brought me safe thus far His grace will lead me home Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, amazing grace shall then prevail in heaven's joy and peace. When we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Thank you for joining us today. Great to have you with us. And now for the VBS video one more time. Take care. Hey, it's Miss Shannon from First Lutheran Church and Preschool. We want to invite you this year to Vacation Bible School 2020, which is Rocky Railway. So, just like we're going to learn about trains and how they have engines with with lots of power, Jesus' power is stronger than those. We're gonna learn that Jesus' power helps us do hard things, gives us hope, helps us be bold and brave, helps us live forever, it lets us live forever, and helps us be good friends. So my friends, I can't wait to see you on YouTube July 13th through the 17th for this year's BBS. See you soon.